Welcome back everybody to Kirby's Adventure Way. I am the Epic Fudge and I am such an Epic Fudge that I decided to beat the boss of Naughty Noon off screen because the boss was so epic that if I had put it on I'd have probably broken YouTube. So let's just go and get the sale. Oh. Why is that sail moving? That's not supposed to happen. Oh god, bird! Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's... That's actually supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, I, I lied. I didn't skip out the boss. You probably figured that out already, but... Yeah. This is the boss of Naughty Noon. This is the Grand Doomer. As you can probably tell, he's basically the leader out of all the Sphere Doomers that we've seen so far. He's basically very similar to uh, the Sphere Dooms in terms of attack patterns, but because he's got hold of uh, one of the sails, like, well, the sail of Magalore's ship, he's considerably more powerful and a lot more aggressive than all of the other Sphere Dooms that we've been against so far. He's also got a lot more health, as you can tell. This particular attack that he's doing right here, if he ends up, uh, if you get stuck in that little dark bit on the ground right there, Basically, like, you'll lose, you'll lose your health because it'll end up eating you. But anyway, I just end up using the hammer flip on him because that is a really overpowered move. But anyway, I can just finish him off by throwing the hammer at him. Boom! But again, that's not the end of a boss fight because after the second phase of a boss fight, once you get into his minimal amount of health, uh, he'll end up making a stone shield that you cannot break. No matter how hard you try, you cannot break this shield. Until he has an utter idiot moment and summons a freaking super swordman. Kibble, blade, whatever he's called. Anyway, on that note, sword power! Yeah, this is the first instance where we use the super ability on a boss. Cleaving power! Sword power! And as you can tell, it's overpowered as hell. Pirate Sword Power! Yeah, really all you need to do is just hit him four times. Galaxia Power! And that's pretty much the end of the fight. It's epic, but it's easy. Baton Power! Baton Power again! And yeah, once he's down to uh, his last health, that's when you finish him off. Pirate Sword Power Away! But on power, leaving power, Galaxia Power! Sword Power! And that is how you beat the Grand Doomer. Utterly slaughtering him with super abilities. And once you're done with that, now we get the sale for reals. And now for the big gay dance again. Question. Did those parts really have to flash just to tell us that we've got them all? Eh, whatever. Oh yeah! 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 You did it, Kirby! The law is back in business! The oars, both wings, the emblem, and the mast. Yes, it's all here! The moment I've been waiting for, it's here! You're my hero! And a promise is a promise. I owe you a trip to my home. A trip to... Halkandra. Halkandra exists in another dimension. It's super far away, but the law can fly us there in a blink of an eye. Pack some snacks, Kirby. We're off to Halkandra. And, and so, so, after, after many, many hours, hours of trekking, trekking through, through the entirety of Popstar to fix Magalore's ship, Magalore decides, decides to give Kirby his well-deserved well reward. A trip, a trip to Magalore's home planet of Halkandra, and... Oh, that kind of looks rather unfriendly, everyone thought. 
but Magalore sends them there anyways. And so, Kirby, King Dedede, Waddle Dee, and Meta Knight uh, venture forth into Halcandra in a very flashy fashion thanks to the Lord Star Hunter. Meta Knight, Waddle Dee, and King Dedede haven't done a goddamn thing, by the way, just thought I'd like to let you know. But either way, the Lord Star Hunter finally enters its home planet of Halcandra. But as soon as it enters the atmosphere, it is greeted by four very unfriendly faces with glowing eyes. Okay, so this is my home plan. I'm really a bit unfriendly, but oh god, no, no! Oh god, we just fixed this shit! Why did you just. Oh god, we got a This was shot down by a four headed dragon known as Lana. Did the team survive? The first to wake up is Magalore. Magalore wakes up and has a look at his screen to find out what it was that ended up shooting him down. And someone was actually paid to animate that, by the way. But either way, Magalore finds out that the four headed dragon that shot him was a dragon none other than Lana. This saddens Magalore once again, for he must have been shot down like this before, and why the ship was broken in the first place. So Kirby gets the idea to tap him on the shoulder, and nod his head, and smile. As we all know, that solves everything in Dreamland, so it should be able to solve everything in Halcandra too. Magalore believes in this team as well. But, can they survive Landia? So that just happened. Anyway, how's Magalore? Kirby, a dragon. Its name is Landia. It's lived on this planet for ages, but it's always been fast asleep. Recently, however, it awoke and went on a rampage. Please, Kirby, you must defeat that crazy dragon. I know I've asked a lot of you, but this is it, I swear. And we're going to completely ignore that and go on to the next challenge, which is the water challenge, which, in my opinion, is the hardest challenge in the game. In fact, it was so hard that on my first go, I nearly broke my I nearly broke my Wii Remote's D-pad trying to get through this level. That's how hard it was. Literally, my thumb was aching for weeks after doing this on the first go because I ended up making so many mistakes trying to get the gold medal on this. But either way, ah, oh, Christ, that wasn't supposed to happen. Either way, uh, like I said. It's very easy to make a mistake in this level, but the water ability, this is where I got to know why the water ability is probably one of the best abilities to use in the game once you know what you're doing. Because this, this challenge, while it was painful to my thumb, uh, it, this was the challenge that got me to uh, know how to use the water ability properly, and ever since I've managed to beat this level, uh, this was basically how I got to use the water ability properly, and why I like the ability so much. Either way, it uses heavily, heavy usage of the, uh, the water fountain attack and the surf attack to get you through, and it shows heavy reliance on the fact that you can use the surf dash to go over fiery surfaces like that, which will be useful uh, later on in the game. Hint, hint. And uh, this also brings us to an ability of the, the water ability, which is this attack. I've forgotten what it's called. But basically, it lets you sort of like hover around with the water ability. Very similar to Flood from Super Mario Sunshine. And I didn't know you could do this at first, but you can actually direct the... You can actually direct this little abil like hover ability thing to make sure you can you know, survive and stuff. So you can make yourself go up and down while you're using that hover ability, and that's kind of necessary if you're supposed to try and get all of these coins and things. So you have to move yourself down, and you have to move yourself up to get above that little thing there. And even, even after all the runs I tried to make on this stage, I still ended up making a lot of mistakes, so... Eh. It's a work in progress. I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I want you to surf past all of these enemies and take them all out. That's the end of the level. And I didn't really do all that good there. I'm not too sure whether I got a gold or anything. Nah, I'm pretty sure I got a gold. There you go. But 
But anyway, we've still got some time to make some progress, and I've uh, got no sandwich filler for you, so I might as well get to the next level, which is in Halcandra. As you can see, this place is clearly a lot different to Popstar with uh, all the drab uh, locations and the volcanoes and stuff, and this very mechanical area known as Egg Engines. So that could either mean that everywhere is controlled by eggs, or uh... nah, I doubt it. But anyway, this is Egg Engines, which is uh, another one of my top favourite levels in the game. It's definitely one of the harder levels in the game as well. You have to watch out for a lot of obstacles that are out to get you. And uh, this brings along a side to uh, Halcandra. It's very similar to how Popstar works, but certain enemies like the Waddlebees have been changed to more mechanical looking drone things. It's kind of weird. But either way, this is Egg Engines and this is some really catchy music. And it's been completely ruined. Anyway, all you're supposed to do here is get the mic ability and uh, yeah. Aim it over there and blow everyone up. As you do. Now the mic ability isn't really much use after that, so it's best to just get rid of it. Because there's not much use for it, it's just a waste of time keeping all of it. And I guess I could have gotten rid of those enemies with it, but... Eh... I don't know. Either way, once you're done with all that, you just need to keep yourself running along these uh, metal platforms, otherwise they will fall. Those Gordos are obstacles, and they introduce the sleep ability as an obstacle as well. If you run into a sleep station, then uh, bad things will happen. Basically, you'll end up falling to sleep, and if you happen to fall asleep on one of those uh, falling platforms, chances are by the time you wake up, you'll be falling to your death. So. Make sure you dodge sleeping ability, and also make sure you watch out for those spark cannons as well. Anyway, uh, the way you get the first gear in here was a really, really annoying one for me. This actually took me, uh, like, I don't know, seven tries. I think this is, like, the seventh take on this level because of how many mistakes I made here. And as soon as I ended up getting it the first time, the recording ended up going balls up the walls again, so... Yeah, this took me a while to, like, record and stuff. It's stupid. But either way, what, what you were supposed to do to get that first gear was smash into the wall before it cru- Like, this little crusher right here, you had to smash into it. If you ended up going into it too late, you'd have ended up going onto the other cannon and completely missing the gear. And if you went into it too early, you'd get crushed. So, you had to be really, really, really careful with uh, how you got that first gear. And it was a very annoying one for me, because I'd either get crushed, or I'd end up being too late and, like, completely missing the gear, and I'd have to start the level over again. And that, that was annoying. Anyway, I was supposed to get Spark so I could get to that bomb over there, but it's not mandatory for anything. It's just so they can get rid of those needle things. Straight from Kirby 64, by the way. Ow! And yeah, stuff like that. Ow! God, not having a good day on this level. Ow! Jesus! Stop hitting me, please! But yeah, I'm on a dangerously low health after that mess up right there. Food! Yes! Anyway, after that, we thankfully get some invincibility candy! Oh my god, I'm on water and I'm on flying and I'm rainbows and destroying everything in my way because I'm uh, awesome. Woo! Look at all these electricity things and why, why am I in another dimension anything? Where's Meta Knight? Where's Waddle Day? Where's all the others? They're not doing anything. Oh my god, oh, I'm hyper. I'm gonna go down here. There's, oh, there's absolutely nothing to get down here. Oh god damn it, oh, that's stupid. I'm gonna get this. Uh, no, I can't be bothered, can't be bothered. Just go past it. Uh, uh, now I'm sad. Anyway. Max and Tomato right there, just get that, go through the door, and yeah, Bob's your uncle, really. But sadly, that's all the time that we've got for this part, so 
Until then, here, I'll see you guys in the next part of Kirby's Adventure Week.